you're listening to the Money Monopolizers Podcast, helping you take control of your financial destiny. It's about time that we invest more in our financial literacy and work towards building generational wealth. If you think you're ready to do the same, then you've come to the right place. Alex, Marlon, y'all ready? Let's get this bread. What's good, everybody? It's Alex Kamunya here, and we are back with episode 47 of the Money Monopolizers podcast, and I'm here with my co-host, Marlon Walls. Marlon, how you doing today? Super hype, bro. Like, if you look at my background right now, you'll notice that I'll have everything moved out of my house, and that's because I'm getting ready to move back to Texas. So by the time everybody listens to this episode, um, I will have defended my thesis, and hopefully I'm literally on the way out of here. So I'm so, so ecstatic, bro. Like, you have no idea. Out, and that means I'll be moving in two days from now. So if this comes out next week, then on next Saturday, I'm out of here. So I I can't rejoice enough to say how happy I am to be out of here. Nah, that's what's up. That's what's up. It's definitely a big move. You know, um, stuff happening now. It's time to, uh, you know, hit that next chapter. So that's uh, yep. that's definitely exciting. I know, you know, being in Indiana, I mean, who wants to be in Indiana? <laughs> so I'm done know. with it. How you doing, though, bro? <laughs> I'm doing good. It's um been working man it's been a crazy week getting a lot done but real productive week um about to go check on these houses now these two flips that got going on um meeting with a contractor got to go to the truck after um got a whole bunch of stuff that i gotta knock out today after this is one o'clock right now but or two o'clock but yeah it's uh other than that staying busy but you know i can't complain at all life is good life is good um all good problems to have for sure, for sure. I'm definitely not complaining. It could be way worse. Um, <clears throat> but yes, we have a great episode for y'all today. We talked with Xavier Miller, um, and this was definitely a podcast, or a, a guest I, I've been looking forward to having on here for a long time. Um, been following him since last year, really. Uh, since, yeah, since last year, like pretty much when we started this. That's when I started like, kind of following his content, and his mindset was always... You know, in a in a in a in a place in the right place, and I was I knew one day, you know, when we get him on here, we would have a great conversation, which is what we did today. We got to talk about a bunch of different things. It was a very diverse episode. The title might even be very diverse, based off what I was thinking of. But um, it's a very very diverse episode. We talked about everything from, you know, his his business. He's a 26 year old entrepreneur, and he's you know already built over a six figure net worth and um investing in real estate stocks businesses he's doing it he's doing it doing it big right now so um it's exciting to talk about we we got to chop it up about a lot of stuff we talked about the you know uh relationships and money we talked about you know generational wealth legacy building all those kind of things so it's a very very good episode especially for i'll say if you're a young man this is definitely a good episode for you you definitely need to be listening to this one because he was definitely kicking game on you know, mate selection and those kind of things that was very, very important. So, yeah, what did you think of it? Nah, man, this this dude way wise beyond his years. Like you, this, you said this dude twenty six. He talking like he a forty year old though because he dropping gems, like just dropping knowledge that you don't gain a, as a young man until you like way older. Like you start seeing getting this stuff from like experience and just going through a lot of failures one, one after another. But no, nah, this dude has his head on, straight on his shoulders. Like his, yeah, his head is on his shoulders. Like in, in multiple aspects, like you said, we've talked about relationship building. We talk about selecting the right mate. Talking about um, just creating generational wealth like we always do, but man, this this dude, I mean, he just on a different level, honestly. And I like how he puts he put a lot of things in perspective, talking about how um, his legacy um, is should come after him based off of the people that came before him. So definitely listen out for that. But this was a definitely a great episode. I think a lot of people get value out of this. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, let's definitely get into it. And also too, you know, if anybody, we're definitely you know still investing heavily in real estate. Definitely trying to. Um, you know, build our portfolios. And we're trying to, if anyone is interested in lending, I want to clarify this because it was a little unclear last episode, but if anybody's interested in private lending to um, our real estate investments in terms of, you know, you lending us money from your 401k or whatever the case may be, we pay you uh, agreed upon interest and, uh, you know, we get you a better rate than what you're getting from Chase Bank where they give you dum-dums for putting your... Uh, <laughs> your uh money in there because they calling you a dumb dumb if you don't realize that yet but that's <laughs> why sure. they, that's why they give you that but anyways yes i just want to plug that if anyone was interested in that definitely hit my hit my line and we could definitely 
make that happen. But yes, let's get into this episode. How you doing today, Xavier? I'm doing great, bro. Appreciate y'all having me on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Super excited for this one. I think uh, this will be one of the better episodes we did. We just talked to Aisha last week, first time. Oh, that yeah, that's, the, that's the OG. Yeah. That's the OG. <laughs> yeah, that was a dope, dope, dope episode. So this one, I'm, I think, I, you know, I, I think it'll be just as good, if not better, because um, I've been following you for a while, and you know, your mindset is definitely similar to ours. So, you know, I think we could have a really, really, really um, va- uh, conversation that's full of a lot of value for people. Um, but yeah, let's kind of just get right into it. Usually how we start every show, we usually like to ask kind of like, uh, what was your upbringing in regards to finances and how you got started in entrepreneurship and for you, real estate investing? Okay. So the the start for me, like I always tell people my household, I grew up in, it wasn't like a super financially literate household. We didn't really talk about money growing up. It was really like, it was obvious that you needed money to go about life. So at an early age, I always knew, I always knew like I want money. I want to be rich. I don't even know why. The early age has always been that way. When I seen people with nice things in the neighborhood and stuff like that, I knew, like, my parents, they were nine to fivers, and there's nothing wrong with that. But I always knew, like, I'm not trying to do that. I'm trying to get money, live a live a luxurious life. That was always my mentality. So that I remember, like, when I was six years old, that's when I started my first business, and I was selling, uh, I was selling candy. Like, I was selling, the, uh, you know, like, the Kool-Aid? Like the little Kool-Aid pack? Yeah. I would take them out and put them into little plastic bags, and I was selling for a dollar. So I was, I used to make a lot of money doing that. So that was, like, the first thing I ever did. Then as I got older and transgressed to more and more different things, then my investment journey started. Like, I was in the military. So when I was in the military about three years in, it was something I always knew I wanted to do. Like, once again, when I was in sixth grade, I heard about stocks for the first time. I had a music teacher named Mr. Bond. And he talked to us about stocks. And I remember, I'm like, man, how can I do that? So I went home, asked my parents, my aunts and uncles. And everybody was just looking at me kind of crazy. But I could tell, like, now that I'm an adult, I could tell that they, they I don't think they knew how to do it either. So it was like, what can they tell me? So, mm-hmm. I, like, after a while, I was like, all right, I'll figure it out later. So like I said, I got in the military. That's when I started going hard with everything, bro. Yep, and I, I just wanted to already start commenting because I see that you had this – um. You had this entrepreneurial niche from an early age, most definitely. Like you always just wanted to make money despite what you were seeing in your surroundings. Like mm-hmm. you were seeing people who didn't didn't talk anything about money because they knew nothing about it. But yep. you still had your own dreams, and aspirations, and you kind of didn't even let the outside influences impact your mentality. So I already give you props for that because most people usually fall victim to whatever they're surrounded by. So if they see in poverty around them, they usually fall into that same type of mentality as they grow older. But I also feel I feel like every stage of your life, like it's all everything has its own purpose. And so, like when you start talking about military, um, you went there and you were able to like I would say for me, for instance, before I get into that, like I'm at Purdue right now doing a master's degree. And um, more than the education, I'm trying to build the build the network because I feel like I'm here for a purpose rather than just like uh, what it would be designed to do. Like you go to school to get education, but there's more you can take out of something. So for you with the military, what was it? What was that like for you? (laughs) The military, man, it taught me It taught me how to maneuver throughout the different things. Like I always tell people, being from Chicago, Chicago, for people that don't know, it's a very segregated city. Like if you grow up in a black area, all you see and know is black people. So the military was my really my, like, really my first time being around other uh, ethnicities like that. So it taught me, like, it taught me how to, how to, like, pretty much, play a political game you can't be so especially with business that's important you, sometimes you got to play that political game to get ahead and the military taught me that sometimes you can't just be so straightforward and you know what i'm saying trying to just be super straightforward with stuff you know so that's not going to work all the time especially in business so politics is a part of business and the military definitely taught me that as well as discipline and i would say those are the main things really discipline and that and just knowing how to stay down and just adapt to any circumstance because in the military you could get thrown in any situation in the blink of an eye and you got to be ready and willing to adapt so it taught me all those things i'm, I'm glad marlon kind of brought that up too because i think I'm, I'm a big advocate for that and it, you know it was interesting that you said you know talking about the military teaching you about politics but i mean you kind of tied it together when you talk about discipline because usually most people think about military think about you know hardcore discipline like just right. you know shut up and get it done you know that kind of stuff and I'm sure you kind of got, you know, part of that mentality from that and also f- from part of your upbringing. But, too, yeah. I think that, too, like even for our lives, too, because 
we grew up, you know, in Houston and like obviously like we we played football in high school growing up and we played for like one of the like the you know the the the, the big programs. It's like they take stuff serious. So, you know, every little thing is a big deal. Like you know, attention to detail, discipline, all those things. And I feel like, you know, that kind of that stage of my life too kind of taught me how to like kind of stay disciplined and just kind of do things that you don't want to do. Right. Like just being comfortable getting or getting comfortable being uncomfortable. Right. So that whole mindset and like take being able to extract those lessons out of certain aspects of your life is super critical. Super um, critical. So I'm just curious and moving forward after that, what does your like uh, real estate portfolio and, you know, other businesses and things like that kind of look like today? So I started buying real estate at the end of 2018. That was my first deal. I got it in Detroit. It was a property for 16.9 thousand. We took out a, uh, for, for, for those who don't know, with a property that cheap, if it's under 20, I think it's 20, I think it's 20000 If it's under 20000 you can't get a property loan. So you have to get a different type of loan. They, the banks won't give you, you know, a house loan on a property that cheap. So you can use different kinds of loans. In my case, we usually, we just use the personal loan. So we we got a personal loan for thirteen k because we didn't want to put up our money. we like, let's keep our money and let's use the bank's money. So we only put up three grand. The house had a tenant in there already paying six fifty. So we got the loan. Now the, now the loan payments was four hundred dollars. So that means we net in two fifty, which don't sound like a lot of money, but we net in two fifty and the tenant paying back the loan. So it's almost as like I almost say we got a free house, but it's like, you know what I'm saying, you get a house for three thousand dollars, she pay off the loan, and now all that is just cash flow. So that was really like my first experience. And when that experience happened, it was like a light bulb went off. Like, man, you know what I'm saying? This is about when you get paid, when you get paid for doing nothing. It's like it's it's <laughs> and it sounds crazy. Like I don't want to I don't want to seem like it's something like super simple and super easy, but it's hard to describe the experience until you actually feel it. When you get paid for just owning something and sitting on it and not doing nothing, it opens up, you know what I'm saying? Open, you just start thinking differently about things. So after that experience, we just start buying more. Like let's do the let's do the same thing, using the same strategy and partnering up with uh different people on some projects. And that's just at this point I have I have five now, but I'm looking at, like, I haven't bought any this year because I've just been chilling, stacking up, handling business, and I've been waiting on the market to see if the market was going to dip. But I'm in the process of buying some right now. I'm about to buy some now. I have two takeaways from that already. So first of all, um, you said you were only cash flowing two fifty. So first, so this is a property um, that you said you couldn't get a normal loan with. So that this is the first thing is that instead of you saying, oh, well, dang, it's just too, it's, uh, too cheap. I can't do it. I, I'm just going to go ahead and back out and forget about it. No, you said, OK, what, what can I do in order to still get this property? Because I know it's a good deal. So you went, a, you pretty much uh, said, uh, took a how can I mindset. We got that from um, Robert Kiyosaki. He always talks about instead of saying I can't say how can I, that opens your mentality, opens your, uh, expands your context to say what, what uh, I can do things. I just need to figure out how to do it. And so now you are able to find a personal loan that gets you to um, achieve your ultimate goal. And then the second thing was that you start cash flowing two fifty, two hundred fifty dollars a month. So yeah, this is not life changing money, but this is also a big motivator for you. Like this is uh, you seeing physically ownership. It can lead to vast amounts of wealth because I'm getting something paid for by somebody else, and then it's also they're also paying me just for me owning it in the first place. And once you have had that first taste of ownership right. that first taste of investment experience that's right. really what propels you forward and i think that was the big takeaway from that first deal yeah and, and also the fact too i mean on top of that you know the thing about real estate is that you know it's number one the tenant is paying it down you're not it's yeah. not coming out your pocket yeah. right it's cash flowing you 250 a month that's fine but when it's 10 now it just became 2500 a month right, right. <laughs> and then you know it's you getting the tax benefits off of it you get to you know depreciate it um, and it's increasing in value. So yeah. you get all those things too. So it's kind of like, you got to look at more so like the internal rate of return of it. Like, what are you really getting out of it? Like in totality, as opposed to just like, you know, people just look at, oh, just 250. Like, no, I mean, you getting away, you getting a lot out of it. And at this point I'm, uh, getting the whole thing now, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's because it, since the, the property was already so low, it was quick. It was a, it was a quick process of her paying it off. So I knew <laughs> like, I'm not gonna be getting this 250 for five, 10 years. I know it's probably gonna be like a one, like a two year thing. Then it's gonna be all mine. The 650 gonna be all mine. Then I can start increasing rent. I order, what whether I want to fix it up, do more renovations. Then I could increase the rent because it was the rent was already like 50 to 100 dollars lower than the market. 
Yeah. But since I heard the the attendant, I wasn't really tripping on it. So you know what I'm saying? It's so many different plays and ways you could go about it. Yeah. Once you once you own something. Exactly. So what what other businesses are you kind of you know sitting on and building right now? So right now, the main business that I'm working on right now is uh, Park Hill Capital, which is my uh, real estate company. We acquire assets and we teach people. And we have a we have a membership where we teach people different uh, things, whether it's real estate. We bring people on for like webinars and stuff like that. So that's the main thing that I'm working on right now. As far as millionaire mindsets, I made that to a, a company in its own. So those are my main two things right now. Like I got a bunch of other things, but like. Those are the main two for me right now. Cause I don't wanna I feel like once you try to do so many things, you end up getting nothing done. So I try to narrow my stuff down to to two or three things and I just delegate the rest of the stuff. Mm-hmm. So sure. I like that already because you build a multiple streams of income, but you're still trying to have a focus on like what's going to be your personal niche. Like what are you going to be known for when somebody sees Xavier Miller? What are they going to think exactly. about? Yeah, yeah. So I like I like that. And also, uh, go ahead. You see, you want to comment? Oh, I just want to comment too. I, the reason I really like the, that strategy as well is because the the business too, like the the business you're building, that's gonna buy your freedom a lot quicker than real estate can. But the real estate exactly. is going to build your wealth. Like real sure. estate, is the legacy play. That's the long term play. But the business is it, that's the gives you the freedom and from yep. in cash flow. Yep, so. that's facts. And I, I want to dive into a little bit uh, like uh, what inspired the millionaire mindsets, because I actually heard the story before and it's, it sounds very synonymous with kind of what we, what me and Alex went through. So I just wanted to, for you to share that with our audience. So uh, millionaire mindset started at the end. Of, it was around the same time I bought my first property. Mm-hmm. And I, but I was already investing into stocks and stuff like that for like over a year now. So those conversations about building wealth and investing and all that, those are conversations that me and my girl, Deanna, we have every single day so it was like one day and this was around christmas of 2018 we were just sitting there having one of those conversations again we was like i was i was i mentioned it i was just like let's uh let's record this like let's just record this and put it out mm-hmm. and let's just you know what I'm saying see where it goes like give other young people an opportunity to like hear these conversations and stuff like that so we started putting it out like 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 how we kind of talked about earlier well, one thing about podcasting is like I know most people, when they jump in the podcast game, it's not like they jumping in like, I'm going to have this huge podcast. It's usually like, let's just make a podcast like just on some fun tip. And then next thing you know, it becomes so much bigger than what you thought. And it's like, wow, this is a this is his own thing now. So that's what it really was with us. It was like, all right, let's put, we start putting out episodes. Next thing you know, it was growing more and more. People was reaching out to us and it was like, oh, we got, we got something here. Let's keep it going. And it was just, that's, that's pretty much was it right there. I, I love that. I love that. <laughs> the fact that y'all was able to grow it and develop it into a business and too, that's like <laughs> once you do, because I know it's like I'm sure it's like something you thoroughly enjoy doing. Mm-hmm. So oh, it's like yeah. one of those things that's like once you monetize it, oh my gosh, all right. Oh, <laughs> it's, it's indescribable, bro. Because it's something like it's it's just conversation, and it's, yeah, you know what I'm saying. But it's 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 informal and it's like entertaining for some people but like you said i enjoy it so yeah. to make it into a full business of his own is like the the thing i'm probably most proud of honestly yeah for sure because i remember whenever we had started ours too we would literally it was the same thing we would like we me and marlon would have these conversations for like we would talk three four hours just talking about this stuff and it's right. like bro i mean just put it on a on a put a camera in front of you <laughs> exactly. and talk, do the same thing and see what come out of it so right. well, yeah. that's what's up yeah, no, that was just my whole my whole reason for answering that because I'm like, bro, you're doing this thing, you're doing this every day, you're talking about it, just literally record while you're talking, and then it's just, it, are you all of a sudden you're monetizing something that you do Monetize. on a daily basis anyway? Yeah, and so that's pretty cool. And d- so th- you mentioned too that you're doing it with your with your girl. Is it your wife now, or is it your girl? No, I'm not married yet. Okay, cool. Okay, so it's just it's your girl. Um, her name is Deanna, right? Yep. Deanna. Okay, shout out to her. So. Y'all, you say y'all started this kind of together, and I know, like, just based off like what I know, I've been following you for a while. That y'all, you know, are heavy in business together, um, and y'all, you know, do a lot of your, you know, uh, ventures and investments together in those kind of things. Um, and y'all are clearly, you know, on this path to building an empire. But I kind of want to, I want to talk more so about this topic of, uh, you know, doing this with uh, your significant other and th- those kind of things because. Um, you know, a lot of people, I'm sure they just like, nah, this is, I do this on my own. She do her own thing, whatever. <laughs> y'all are kind of like doing it together. So I want to ask, like, why did y'all, why did you, or why did y'all both decide to like, you know, 
you know, go into business together? So that's, man, that's a very interesting question. I don't think nobody ever asked it, asked me that in that way. So that's like, yeah, that's, that's, that's it. But I think, man, the simplest way I think I could put it this, on why we decided to go in business together is because when we both got together, we both was that ground zero. You know what I'm saying? And I, like, it was me. I really started getting the information on business and stuff like that. And we together. So obviously, she going to be the first person I'll tell them. So then when she started getting information and she started knowing stuff, it was like, when I decided I wanted to go in business, it's, it's like, why not do it with somebody that's right here? She know, she knows the things I know. She She's smart. She's intelligent. So it was like, why not? And it was like one of those things where I didn't have to, because to be honest, it's not for everybody. Like, it's not for every couple to go in business together because it's not, <laughs> it's, 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 it's not, it's not easy. So it's like, uh. It was it was just for us, it was just like, why not, man? It's, it was something that I wanted to do. I didn't have to beg her or like, you know what I'm saying, talk her into it. It was something that she wanted to do too. Mm -hmm. So it was so that process was it was very uh it was very simple simple for us. But the thing I would say though, for most people, when if you're gonna do that or you're thinking about doing, you gotta understand the roles when you do it. Like you can't <laughs> like this this is a this is an important part. You gotta break that down, like, cause both of y'all like let's say in your relate your relationship and your your relationship and your business, if you're working with your significant other, it's two different things. It's two completely different dynamics. Like me, like always, I don't know how other people feel about it. Well, me, how how I go with my relationship and my household, like I'm the leader, I'm the leader of my household, you know what I'm saying? But in my relationship, it's gonna be aspects of my relationship where Deanna is more equipped than me. You know what I'm saying? She's gonna be more intelligent than me, and then it makes sense. For her to be ahead of that. But me as a man, I can't get on no ego trip, no bullshit. Like, <laughs> no, I'm the man, I'm the man. I need to be like, no, this is business right now. Yeah. I ain't got no room for emotion. Mm -hmm. She is the head of this part. But when our relationship, all right, we now we back in our relationship, we back to doing what we do. But when it comes to business, there's no room for no egos and no emotions mm -hmm. like that. It's not no ego trip, none of that bullshit. So yeah. if for people that want to do that. That's that's key to understand. Like you got to separate the two. Don't be trying to the same energy you got in your relationship. Don't try to bring that into business because it could mess things up. That's that's so big. And I'm glad you pointed that out though because you see that you see that both pe both pieces play a role. Like both you and her play a role in this business in the Major success role. of the business. And I, I saw a tweet that you had put out that said, um, "I got money, my girl got money. I own businesses and she does as well. I own property and she does as well. I work every day uh, to put us in a better position and she does as well. Yeah. Everything is un every anything else is uncivilized. I never took dating as a joke. We're here to build a legacy." And yeah, I just, I mean, that's a, that's a, everything you just said leading up to that is just really a testament to this entire thing. Like y'all both are, y'all both play vital roles in the success of the business. I'm just trying to see, I guess, a little bit of like uh, what role has she played in, in your success. I could, I could go on, I could go on and on all, all day about that. But I would say first and foremost, so I tell people the story all the time. When I was in the military, like I was three years in, I was kind of just BSing because I always knew, like you know, what I'm saying I could get my, I could get my stuff together. I always figured like I got time. To get my stuff together. I'm young. I could be yes right now. I can get it together later. But the military showed me that that's not the case. Like anything can happen at any moment because in 2016, I was tasked with a deployment. And for people that's familiar with the military, you know, like deployments, when they let you know, you can have either like a week to, until you leave or you can have like five, six months. And in my case, I had like five, six months. So in that process of me getting ready to deploy, they uh, encouraged all of us to create wheels before we left, just in case, like, you go overseas, it's the military, you know, anything could happen, bombs go off, shit like that could happen, you could die. So it's like, it's in your best interest to make a wheel. So I'm like, oh, okay, cool. So I'm making my wheel. Then I realized, like, while I was making it, I realized I ain't have nothing, bro. Like, I had, like, I had, like, 10 pair of Jordans. I had an Xbox. I had a watch. And I'm like, I had a little money. I had a little money in payments, bro. And I'm like, Man, it was like the lowest moment of my life. I'll never forget it, bro. It was literally the lowest moment of my life. I'm like, I never want to be in this position again. Mm -hmm. So when I deployed, I made it like, it was like my goal. Like, I'm not spending nothing. I'm saving everything I got. So every time I got paid, I would literally send the whole thing to my girl. I'll probably keep like $200 just in case, you know what I'm saying, I want to do something. But I was literally like, you know what I'm saying, obviously they taking taxes. But other than that, I was sending everything to my girl, just everything. So I'm just telling her, like, you know what I'm saying? Stash this away, stash this away. Because when I come back home, we about to start making moves. She like, all right, she with it. So I came back home. 
Like, she was literally going to the bank, like, literally just so she wouldn't spend it either. Taking the cash out, and we had a safe. We had a safe at the time. She was spending the money in the safe. Wow. So, like, some real hood shit, bro. So, like, <laughs> so, like when I came home, like, I remember the day I came home. I came home, obviously excited. Now I'm like, I'm like, yeah, we're, we're like, this is going to be one of the first questions you ask. So I'm like, yeah, so, like, what the money? Like, so she, she went to the safe. All of it was like twenty five grand all, in twenties. So, I'll never forget twenty five thousand all twenties just sitting there, and I'm like, man, I was so happy. I mean, I knew she wasn't gonna do nothing with it because I knew her. I already had that trust in her, but that like solidified everything to me because it's like I was on the whole other side of the planet. She yeah. could have did anything, whatever she wanted. We wasn't married or nothing like that. She could have just been wilding out because I know stories of people that's done things similar without them sending their money, but just their lady having access and they're just blowing it they come back to nothing so that could that could have ha happened to me but like i said i had that trust where it did so after that like even my our first real estate deal she found that deal like she found the deal ran the numbers she just came to me and was like you want to go through with this and i'm like yeah let's do it so she with the podcast she been my partner in that with my business with park hill capital what most people don't know is like she actually run the day-to-day -day operations on that like i let her do like with the uh webinars and like, even finding a lot of the deals, I let her run it on her own because she actually is enjoying it. She's becoming a, uh, she's becoming a developer right now. She's getting cert uh, becoming a certified developer. So she's, like I said, I could go on and on. She's been, like, a lot uh, uh, a lot of help, bro. Hey, hey man, you, you got you to gotta, you gotta tell me the prayer you said for that. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that's good. That's a, that's because... No, because the, the shot. First of all, shout out to her. That I mean, shout out to her. She a queen for that for sure. Um, that's you know that's some definitely some queen kind of stuff to be doing. Um, but I know you know I really I want to I want to get into this into this conversation about kind of um you know because I saw you I saw you talk about mate selection one day on uh Twitter mm -hmm. and that whole thing and um I really I'm really I talk about this kind of stuff a lot with um uh, some of my other friends and and. You know, you have mentioned like why it's so important in terms of like, you know, it literally will uh, it, it determines the trajectory of your life. Right. And I truly I'm an advocate of that as well, because I truly believe that the significant other that you choose is going to play at least a 51 percent, you know, by 51 percent, meaning majority uh, role in whether you succeed or fail. Because now, essentially, what you're doing is you're introducing a whole nother factor or a whole nother person in your life that is like a factor you can't control, right? For instance, your girl, when you were sending her that money, she could have just took it and ducked off and just been, you know, out of there like that, and it'd have been out of your kind of control um, yeah. to an extent. And that's why, like, I take this kind of dating stuff and all that stuff, at, like you said, it's not a joke. I take it seriously because I know. I'm not going to bring no one into my life that don't have the same vision and the mindset. Like I'm talking a long-term vision and mindset because I'm not just dating you just so I can say, oh, we dating and then we break up in a, in a month or two months or whatever. No, like, no, that's like a non-negotiable thing. So can you kind of talk more about that in terms of like how important that is of picking a mate and those kind of things and someone that's going to be able to like kind of, you know, help elevate you? Mm, man, man, yeah. I feel like, to be honest, bro, I feel like us as men, we don't speak about this enough. It's kind of yeah. like it's something that everybody should know or something, but we ne you never really hear these conversations like this. So that's why I, me personally, I speak on it so much because I know how life changing or how much life breaking it can be. And it's yeah. extremely, it's extremely important for all the reasons you said, like it's going to play a, it's going to play a major factor because this is a person, obviously, if you're in a relationship with them, this is a person that you obviously prioritize. So that means they're going to have a lot of your energy. They're going to have a lot of your time. They're going to have access to certain things that most people, 99% of people, not going to have access to you. So if it's not the right person, they can abuse that. They could they could do so many things where shit could just go left. So it's like, you only if you don't have anything going on, I feel like that's when it's, I'll say it like this. When you got stuff going on, that's when you have to be more cautious. And more aware of the people you're messing with because all it takes, like I tell guys all the time, all it takes is one mistake. One mistake with the wrong person, whether it's like getting her pregnant or anything. All it takes is one mistake now. Like she you you tied to her for the rest for the rest of your life basically. Who knows how much money you're gonna have to be coming out of to 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 give this woman who like you know what I'm saying? It's so many, it's so many things to this part where where like people don't don't really pay attention to. So me personally like this is my this is my mentality when it, 
when I was like looking for a woman, it was certain things that I looked for and valued that kind of like told me like, okay, this is this gonna make me, you know what I'm saying, buy into this. And like, like I said, this is just, I don't want nobody like, you know what I'm saying, attacking me or, you know, people getting their feelings about stuff. Yeah, for sure. This, this, this is me personally. This is what I look for. Like, before I got with my girl, one of the biggest things to me was I, I noticed how much she admired her father. Like, I seen like every time we talked about her dad, like, or she mentioned her dad, she would talk about him with so much admiration. It was always very respectful. Like even after, t even like if it was something that she disagreed with on, like she wouldn't dog him or nothing. She would just be like, you know, that's him and blah blah blah. But she, how much she loved her dad, how much she respected him. So that off the top, it told me like if she could do that to her with her father, she's capable of doing that with a man she's in love with. So that off like okay, cool. Like she's not, she's not the type that's gonna disrespect the man that she's with just because they're going through tough times. Because I seen her not disrespect her father when she could have to me because I didn't know her father at the time. She could have been talking crazy. No one is never going to get back to him, but she didn't. So that, that showed me something very important right there. Then I realized how much she valued family. And I'm like, okay. Then I seen she was intelligent and she she carried herself the right way. You know what I'm saying? I was around her a lot. She was never out here sloppy doing stuff <laughs> like that. So it was like, okay, those are the things that I value that. And I feel like, I feel like us as men, we got to be better we got to be better. Uh, we got to be better evaluators when it comes to you know according to somebody seeing like who we want to be with. Because a lot of times we just think we just think with our with our uh, penis. You know, we get horny and all that. That's what, just being real. That's how it is. Oh no, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just being 1, real. So sometimes you got to you got to you got to think with the brain upstairs, man. You got to be able to you know what I'm saying think with that and think long term. Think on like what do I want to do? Obviously, when you're young. You might be just thinking about enjoying yourself. You know what I'm saying? It's nothing wrong with that. But once once you do decide you want to get something serious, you have to really treat it very serious and just know, like, okay, I'm not about to give my access and energy to just anybody. But it's it's, it's like I could talk about this all day, man. Because it's hey. I see it so much. I see it so much with dudes. They they make one bad mistake and they pay for it for 18, 20 years. It's, who who knows where they could have been if they yep. just got it right the first time. Man, <laughs> you preaching, man, because <laughs> that this conversation, like you said, I, Marlon, I'm going to let you kind of go after. Nah, I just want to no, no, you this, to say on that. Yeah, this is something I talk. I'm heavy and I'm I'm a huge advocate on because I am big on like being able to control every aspect of my life. It's not a, it's 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 a yeah. blessing and a curse. Right. Because yeah. you want to be able to control everything. But at the same time, you don't want to yeah. bring that that mentality into like relationships and stuff. Yeah. Um, but at the same time. When you bring another person, you're introducing a factor that's out of your control. So now you had to make sure that that factor at least is going to be able to make good, you know, wise what wise choices and good judgment without you kind of having to influence it at all. Like if you if worst case scenario, if you didn't have to like, you know, if you didn't have any say, is she going to be able to make good decisions and, you know, exactly. represent you well, represent y'all as a as a unit well? Like is is that is she going to be able to do that? And I think a lot, like you said, a lot of people don't think like that. I was reading the, uh, I don't know if you know Michael Todd, the the pastor. I was reading his book, yeah. Relationship Goals. And he talks about in there, the th it's like three, it's three things that, like men, by, as, okay, because as people, like men are, we're wired differently than women, right? Yep. So, like, biologically, there's, he said that there's three things that men need and there's three things, his wife said the three things that men need and three things that women need. So, men need Number one, honor and respect, right? Yep. And that's just something that a man biologically needs. Yep. And like the, the, it, it reminded me of that when you said that, you know, you saw how she treated her father while she didn't even know you that well enough so where she could have bashed him. And that yep. showed yep. something, right? Men need, another thing he said men need is support. Is, the, is this woman going to support me in any endeavor I do, no matter what, even if it's like a ridiculous thing? Like, obviously, to, you know, to an extent, but like, is she is she there? Is she going is she or is she trying to say, no, you can't do that or whatever, whatever? Is she is she elevating you or is she bringing you down? Is she helping you get closer to your goals or is she not? Right. And then the last thing he said that men need is sex. Like, that's the that is like the, biologically, that's what men need. Right. Yep. As a woman, <laughs> I'm going to say this real quick, too. As a woman, he said that women need. um security affection and communication those are the three things that women need 
And yeah. as a man, you had to be able to provide those three things to her in the same way that she could provide those other three things to you. <laughs> you preach, dog. You preach. So you preach. That, 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 <laughs> this is why I love this conversation because you know, at the end of the day. I mean, y'all provide value to each other, but it's in different ways. And when you're ways. providing, yeah, when you're providing that ultimate value in each in each of those aspects that men and women need, man, it, that's the definition of a power couple. That's what mm-hmm. that becomes. So, and it's as simple as what you just said. It's as simple as that. Women, I feel like a lot of times, men, we be so stuck in our ways that we can't see outside of our shoes. So we kind of think like. Just because what you're doing and what you need, that's what she needs as a woman. Yes. But women got different needs than men, like you just said. So you got to be able to to see outside of yourself and see outside of your shoes and understand that, like you said, women need they need security. They need affection. They need communication. They need it off the top. And if you don't understand that, you pro- long term, you probably going you probably going to lose your woman. Or if you don't lose, y'all are not going to have a happy relationship. But at the same time, us men, we not we simple. We very simple, like you said. We we extremely simple, man. All you gotta do is tell us you love us. Oh man, you the you the shit. You know, rub our shoulders. And we gonna do whatever you we gonna do whatever you want for us. You know what I'm saying? You give us that support. That's like we gonna be yeah. like, man. Like I heard somebody talking. He was like, man. He was like, you could just rub our stomachs and we'll go build a garage for you. Tell us you love us. You like, we gonna be, be outside building a garage. And I'm like, that's facts. I feel like a lot of women they don't. They don't understand that, like how important that is. Like that that's real right there. No, yeah, for real. And I, I saw you talk about too about as a man, no matter what happens at the end of y'all's relationship, you the way she came in needs to be better than how she's leaving. Facts. That hey, I could go on like just and I feel like a lot of <laughs> I feel like a lot of men, they 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 send a bad president and they like <laughs> I'll put it like this. Like when I see a woman out here that's Especially if she's younger, you know what I'm saying, I don't trip, but especially when they're older, late 20s, early 30s, and I see, like, they're not really doing nothing or they got, like, bad, just, like, bad habits, that's going to, I, I, I could already automatically, whoever their ex is, that tells me everything about their ex. Yeah. Because there's no way, I know me with my life, there's no way, if me and my girl broke up right now, you're going to see her out here sloppy. Because I'm not, I'm not, and I'm not trying to say, I'm her dad or I made her a certain way, but it's just after being a, being together so long, it's going to be certain habits and things that she's going to take away from me as her man. So she's going to have a certain way she carry carry herself. And when you out and if we wasn't together, you would see that. But um, like I said, on the other, opposite side, when I see the opposite, that just t- off, off top, I know exactly the kind of man she's dealing with based on the mm-hmm. way, you know what I'm saying? Because certain men... A certain caliber of man is not going to allow certain things. It's, yes. it's just as simple as that. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's big right there. Matter of fact, I want you to uh, comment because I don't know if people r- realize how old you are. So I need you to tell, them, tell everybody that. <laughs> yeah. I'm 26, man. Exactly. <laughs> so this, hey. this dude just dropping gems. Like, just, <laughs> way wise beyond your years, man. Thank you, bro. Thank and, you. And, sh- and shout out to you, too, for getting her to Ben's truck for her birthday, man. That was huge. I saw that, bro. <laughs> That was huge, bro. I was like, bro, this dude really good. <laughs> so. She deserves it, though. She deserves it. Like I, like I told y'all before, it's a, she's been super beneficial to, to everything we got going on. So I'm like, she deserves it. And like I tell people all the time, I'm like, not only, like, obviously I got it for her and that's nice, but it's it's doper to me knowing that she could get it for herself if she yeah. wanted to. Mm-hmm. Knowing that she's not dependent on me for her livelihood. You know what I'm saying? So that's like super important because some people might see that as like, man, you you gonna take care of a woman? It's like, trust me, dog. She got her own brand too. But yeah. You know what I'm saying? But she bring if you if if you know all the stuff she brings to a table, you wouldn't you would want to do the same thing. And I feel like mm-hmm. as a man, you want to take care. Of, like men by nature, we want to take care of the people that we love. We want to mm-hmm. provide for them. We want to do nice things for them. That's just how we are. And if we yeah. and if we can do it, we're gonna do it. <laughs> And, and speaking of that, too, kind of transitioning to that, because this is a huge debate, especially on Twitter, where they always people talking about, you know, who pe- who should be paying what part of the bills and those kind of things. Right. Uh, you all know people always lose. They shit on that. <laughs> yeah. But no, I'm a big advocate for it. I believe a man should be paying all the bills just because, yeah. like, you know, it's it's, it's weird, man, because I, I think like I, I came up in the two parent households like am I like I don't know what. Me and my parents, we never talked about politics, but just on our livelihood, like the way they thought about things, 
they had real conservative views, whether they knew it or not. You know what I'm saying? And they and they kind of just most black people do if you really think about yeah. it. Even people that that identify with the Democratic Party, most of us have real conservative views, and we we see like relationships, you know, as the man head of household, you know, shit like that. So that's how I came up. And my dad, like, he was the my mom worked, but we knew my dad is the one that's the head of the household, and I feel like taking care of the financial. The financials is just the easiest thing you can do. Like how we talked about women need security. Yeah. Like what's more security than you just taking a basic, taking care of basic financial needs? I feel like if you can't do that, or if your woman knows that worst case scenario, if we he wouldn't be able to take care of our bills. It's like where's the security in? <laughs> and where's the example that you setting for your like? I look at it like this: if I have kids, what's the example I'm setting for my son? Yeah. If he knows I can't even pay the bills. So, you know what I'm saying? Pay the basic bills. I need his mom to get, I'm like, on the first, I'm like, hey, you got your, uh, way your hat for the ring. Like, what, like, what is, like, what kind of example is that for my son? So yeah. that's when I speak, I'm really speaking from like that angle. Like, it's about setting examples for the next generation. Like, that would be corny, even for my daughter. Like, to see me asking her mom for half of the, like, what? Like, what? Like, that's, that's a, now when she's, now when she finds her man, she's gonna be cool with somebody. With her putting the bill on things, and I'm just, I'm just not cool with that. I feel like a man should, like, that's just leading off the top, being able to take care of financial. Not saying she don't have to do nothing. Yeah. Because people misconstrue that, and they say, okay, well, what's she doing? Obviously, she got an eye value as well. She got to be on her A game as well. But when it comes down to just those basic things, you should be able to take care of those. Now, people fall on hard times. That's granted. People always fall on hard times. But I'm just saying. Yeah, eventually you should strive for that. Strive yeah. to, I'll take care of my household. My my one machine got to worry about paying no bills. No, nah, hundred percent. I like the way that you, that you think in long term, though, because uh, so first of all, I want to date back to when you were talking about how she was talking to you about her father, and that's really something that you have to be thinking about when you are making certain decisions in your household. Right. Because you have to think about how everything that you do reflects on what your kids are seeing. Because whatever they see you doing, they're going to remember that, and they're going to take it to uh, their person. Like when they're trying to get their own household together, they're going to uh, remember those core values. So your if you, your son sees you doing certain things, he gonna be treating his his lady a certain way. That's why exactly. uh, that's why oftentimes if you um, if a dad is not in their son's life, they have no. So the the son has no guidance on how to how to be a man, and then they, they often fall into the wrong, uh, wrong traps. They look they're looking for a role model, but don't have any, and um, that's usually very detrimental to somebody. So very if you are in their life, you need to be leading a have a, leading a great example for them because you I mean you just don't you never really understand how influ, influential you can be until you see somebody giving a testament to their um to their parents like your man. like your wife did. Man, people don't understand like biologically. We just differ in a lot of ways, men and women. So when you got a kid that's being raised without a father, there's some things that a woman, not 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 like in a bad way, that she's gonna be more like acceptable to that a man is. You know what I'm saying? So she might like you know, like like prime example. If you fall down, you riding a bike and you fall down, and you with your mom, your mom, most moms are gonna be like, oh, like you know what I'm saying? Are you okay? That's the first thing they're gonna say. And then now you like probably wanna cry. But when you with your dad, you fall. Your dad like. You hey, you get up. You, better, you know what I'm saying? It's just a different, and that mentality carries on to different things in life. So it's yeah. so important for that man to be around. You know what I'm saying? They're gonna teach you discipline. They're gonna teach you how to be a man. That's something that a woman can't do. A woman can't teach you how to be a man, just like yeah. a man can't teach a girl how to be a woman. Right. So it's, it's, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's super. It feel like it should be common sense to most people. So I don't even understand why a lot of people even argue these things. Yes. And man, that's this is a that's this is a really important conversation to have too. And I want to comment on what you have mentioned too in terms of like uh, being able to provide for your household too. Because the way I kind of think of that too is as a man. I mean, I don't think a man. This is just my opinion. You could attack me. People can attack me if they want. I don't care. But I don't really think a man should be counting. You know what his woman is bringing to the table, right? Like you should be man. like <laughs> you shouldn't be like. Oh, okay, yeah, I'm I'm bringing this, she's bringing that. Okay, now we got this together. Like, no, I've got this, and I'm able to take care of the entire household with what I got. Whatever she has is is cool. Like, right. that's just added to the pot. But as a man, it, I believe it's my responsibility to be able to provide an environment for a woman not to have to worry about any provision. Like, and in fact, it should be an a, a environment of abundance, right? Because at the end of the day, if I expect, I'm very traditional in the sense of I, like you said earlier. 
it's like you had a relationship and then you got the business. When it comes to the relationship, um, I, I believe a man should be leading the relationship in that way, right? Leading the relationship and leading the future household. So as a man, how can I be asking her to like say, oh, okay, like you said earlier, hey, you got your half of the rent or whatever. And now I want her to, I want her to lead, I want her to follow my lead. Like what? That doesn't even make no sense. They don't even make sense. <laughs> like you say that to people and people get, I'm like, how do y'all get in y'all feelings about this? This literally doesn't make sense. How do you expect somebody to follow you? And you yes. guys are splitting shit 50 50. <laughs> like, what, like, what, like, what, like, it doesn't make any sense. But, like, not saying that, not saying that she shouldn't, she shouldn't follow you if y'all are, you know what I'm saying, splitting the bills. But I'm saying you shouldn't expect, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, if she decides mm-hmm. to still follow you and want you to lead, okay, that's cool. But you shouldn't expect that, especially in 2020, dealing with today's American women. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Hey. I'm just, that's just being real. Yes, sir. It's 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 a hundred percent real. Shout out to the uh, Carters for that when they talked about it on the song on that on that album. And he said, "Ain't nothing to it," and he said, "Boss." So I mean, right. if you as a man, like if it, it sh- look, it should be nothing to it. Like it's that simple. Like you provide right. it, and that's it. That's the end of the conversation. Facts, facts, man. <clears throat> I, I always tell people, I'm like, you shouldn't be thinking of because sometimes this is what people say. They're like, okay. Or what if, uh, if your woman leaves you and then you've been doing all this? I'm like, see, that's the the worst mentality. Why are you thinking about your woman leaving you? You yeah. should be so on your A game where not to say like you don't care or nothing, but you should be so on your on your mission, on your shit, where that's not even on your mind. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, like you so on your shit where you're going to have that lifestyle whether you with her or without her. So yeah. whatever she bring is just like a plus. She gonna she better be bringing a plus because exactly. you not you shouldn't be scared to be alone anyway. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. that's the mentality that men should have off, off top. Because if you don't want to be alone, you're always gonna settle for for BS. Mm-hmm. Right. A hundred percent. That's 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 for sure. I'm. I hope people really understand that and don't don't let that go over your head. Like any man that's listening to that, really understand what we're saying. Because that's I promise it's going it's going to elevate your life. Right. I do. I want to talk too about um like tra- transitioning from that kind of like because I know you're big on like legacy building and generational wealth and those kind of things and the importance of that right because I've been like thinking of this heavily really over the past kind of I guess a year or so my perspective on it has changed um because I mean I'll just kind of tell a little story real quick because just about like my life in terms of like why I think the way I think because whenever I was this is for I know we got a lot of new listeners and people that haven't heard this, but I was actually born in Kenya and I was born there and I'm 24 years old. I was born. I only lived there for one year, but my dad came over here in, t- in 1997, a year after I was born in order to kind of give our family a better life. Right. So over here, there's more opportunity. So he came over here my, and um, he when he got here, he kind of like struggled a lot trying to like acclimate to the culture. There was a lot of times where he kind of thought like it was is this really worth it? Like it, it was, it was hard. He was struggling. It was hard. It was, he wanted to quit and he wanted to just go back and say, okay, I tried. At least I tried. It's not for us, but he persevered and he got over here. And my mom came over here a year later with me and my sister. And, um, we ended up settling, you know, and in, in Houston or we lived in New Orleans, settled in Houston. And I lived there, you know, till I came to college. And I think I'm, I'm leading this up, but I think about this because, like the life that they were able to give me in terms of, um, you know, overall quality of life is significantly better than a lot of people that were already native to this country. So they came over here and they hustled and they worked and they even, you know, saved up an entire, you know, they paid for my college pretty much from saving it up for 20 years. Like just literally they hustled, worked, saved for both my my sister and my college, we didn't have to pay a dime out of our pockets. We didn't graduate with no debt because my parents hustled for that. And that's kind of like the position they put us in, right? So the reason I bring this up, though, is because it's kind of like I think about now when I started doing this whole like wealth building thing, I thought about it as, okay, I just want to be financially free and just like live a good life, right? But now it's kind of differently as the last over the last year, as I've learned more of these things and I've thought about it more, it's bigger than me. And I realized, oh, this whole thing is actually way bigger than me. It's about the people that were before me and the people that are after me, because the people that were before me sacrificed so much, did so much for me to they came here and put they we were on a rung down here on the proverbial ladder. But they came and put us on a rung way up here that was above people that were even here. And so for me to just squander that and kind of just say, 
yeah, I'm good with just, you know, whatever, being financially free and just, you know, being good myself, it's, it would be selfish and it would not be doing them justice. I mean, I did all everything they wanted me to accomplish, which was just graduate school. That's all they wanted me to do. <laughs> but, but now it's like, I got to take that to another level. And that's exactly. why I said it's bigger than me. It's generational wealth. And that's what, you know, it, it goes to the people before you and the people after you. And so I tell this whole story to kind of like say that's my perspective with, you know, the importance of leaving a legacy and building generational wealth. So I kind of want to hear why you think it's so important to be building generational wealth. Man, you just said it all right there, man. It's about, <laughs> you, like, it's, it, I can't say it better than that, man. It's just you want something. We all here, like, in my opinion, we all here to make it better for the people that come after us. Like, I feel like each generation should be better than the one that was before them. And I feel like it's it's it should be your life. Like me personally, like I'm 26. I talk, I said this earlier, but like this year is something I really recognize. Like I identify that like my life mission is to build a affluent, like impactful, and an honorable family and a wealthy family. Like that's 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 my life mission. And you know what I'm saying? So I could pass like, and I always I always talk to people about this because I I know my family history a little bit. And uh, like when I go visit my grandmother, I always talk to her about it. So my 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 grandmother's my grandmother's grandfather was a slave, and oh. yes, yeah, so, and my grandmother's dad he was a uh, a sharecropper. He used to farm for a white family and stuff, and then he went to the military. So my 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 grandmother she was raised by her grandfather, and my grandmother she was a maid for a rich family. Like she was a she was a maid for like a, a top lawyer in Chicago, a white lawyer in Chicago. She was his maid and shit. So then my parents. They was, they was, uh, my parents was the first to get, like, high school educated. My mom went to college and stuff like that. And then me and my brothers, we was the first in that line to really come from a two-parent household. Mm -hmm. And, like, the trajectory, like, like, when I, when I think, when I thought about it like that, I'm like, the trajectory from my family has been getting, like, even though it's, 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 it sounds crazy, but it's been getting, like, better and better at each generation. So I feel like it's my duty, me and my brother's duty. So when we had kids, they supposed to be in a whole different position so they could trace it back to knowing like, you know, this many generations behind. So that's that's what legacy is to me, like just leaving something behind for the next generation. Like it's super important. Like we're not here to like I was just having this conversation with my girl. I'm like, cause she was she was talking. We was talking about death because somebody close to her died. She was talking about how, how suck, how how bad it is. And I'm like, I look at it from this perspective. I'm like, if we all live forever what would be the point like what would be the motivation you know what i'm saying it's motivation for me to know that at some point i'm going to die at mm -hmm. what point i don't know but at some point it's going to happen so me knowing that is all the motivation that i need to make my life the best life so when the people that come after me they're in a way better position they like man when x was here he held it down for us he passed us a plug and we didn't have to get it out the mud or no bs like that you know what i'm saying so that's that's just that's how I look at it. It's it's as simple as that to me. Yeah, man. man. This dude mindset is so special, bro. But I love how you outlined how how much we're improving each generation because yeah. you're talking about like just four generations ago, we we're back in literally in slavery times where we're right. serving masters and stuff. And yeah. now this this previous generation was we were finally graduating through high school. This generation, we're starting to see that we can come from two parent households, we can start building wealth. Now, a lot of people are going to take the position that you're in in this generation and be like, well, um, we don't have money uh, to, to go build generational wealth. And so I saw you put out a tweet saying uh, people don't understand that the lack of money is not the problem. It's really a lack of uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it's um, a lack of information. Exactly. That's what yeah. you said. And so people the fact they they're owed something now. They're like, well, we were <laughs> oppressed by these by these people, so they, they should be they should be um, providing us reparations for it as a result. Like we we should be given something because of what they did to us in the past. But so how do you actually feel about that? Oh yeah, that's I feel like that's just gonna always be people that way that 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 instead of saying like I can't do something for these reasons, they're gonna say I can for these reasons. There's always gonna be those two different sides of the spectrum. So and I like. For me personally, like I just said, I just talked about my family project, uh, trajectory. And just that alone lets me know that I can't make any excuses. Like I always talk about my grand, my grandfather. When he at the time of his at the time of his death, he was almost a millionaire. And he was born in the early 1930s. So I'm like, I'm like, if I know that, how can I make excuses about something I can't do in 2020? 
You know what I'm saying? Like, do you know? How can I say, oh, I can't do this, I can't do that? Well, my grandfather was almost a millionaire. He was he was born in the era where it was really real. Like, mm -hmm. fuck all that. Like, you know what I'm saying? This petty shit that go on now. He was in the area where it was like, you can't go here, you can't do this. Right. Literally, you really can't go here. You can't drink from this water fountain. We not going to get you, you can't buy real estate here. You can't live here. He was in that era. So it's like, knowing that, I can't make any excuses for anything. Like, granted, when I tell people that, I'll, I'll, I'll let it be known that obviously we not, you know what I'm saying, er, things are not, ama or I don't want to say, things are not perfect. I'll say that. Mm -hmm. But it's much better than than what your ancestors had. It's much better than what even just the previous generation had. So it's like, how long are we going to pass down that mentality? Like, I don't want my son to think, oh, I can't do this because of this. It's like, what? I didn't raise you like that, bro. <laughs> like, what are, you talk what are you talking about? You like, where are you learning this stuff at? So it's like, that's how I look at, like, how long are we going to keep passing down this mentality of we can't do certain things because of whatever the fuck we want to make up in our own head? Like, I believe I could do anything. I don't give a fuck what it is. I just think <laughs> that's just how I'm built. I think I can do I, I think I can make it happen. So yeah. I feel like more people need to carry on that mentality opposed to the mentality of like, oh, poor me. I can't do this because of this. Like we all got like if you want to if you want to talk about barriers and make up barriers, you, know, hey, you can do the shit all day. Mm hmm. Now, yeah. the, that exact reason is why we preach mindset, dude. Like literally all you're doing is telling yourself I can do this despite any obstacle that's placed in my way. And because you believe that you can do something like that, you inevitably go find ways in order to achieve that. So that's what right. I'll have to comment on. But that's literally why we preach mindset so much. Yeah. And two, I, I love the fact when you talk about how, you know, disrespectful it would be to kind of say that you can't do something to your ancestors in 2020, in the year 2020. Because I think about it, too. And it's like, bro, you literally think about like the time that we're in right now. Like you could, we're in a time where you could like literally download an app on your phone, get in your car, drive other people around and literally make money. And by the way, while you're driving, you can be listening to a podcast about real estate investing. And then after That's a year of doing that, have saved up enough money just for a down payment on a rental property and literally change your like family's trajectory. Literally. <laughs> it's, it's no, it's like me personally, man, like how I see it, I'll, I'll break it down like this. Like I didn't all, like to be honest, I didn't always see it this way. Like it was a point in time, like especially like, like I'm from Chicago. Chicago's a real, it's a real like, it's a lot of wild shit that go that goes on, but it's a con it's like a lot, it's a conscious area too. Like you grow you brought up learning about your history, learning about, you know, the black struggle and stuff like that. So it was a point in my life where I always didn't think this way. It was a point where I thought, like, man, I wouldn't be able to do this because I'm black. And it was because it was really like cause my parents didn't teach me that. It was really because I, I was hearing it from outsiders until I got to a point where it's like, whoa. Like, why the fuck? I, like, why do I think that? Like, I can't do it. It's too many examples for me to say I can't do something because I'm black. It's way yeah. too many examples. Like, it's yeah. like you could count you could count them all day. Then I yeah. had one in my immediate family. My grandfather, he wasn't no, he wasn't super rich or wealthy. He didn't do anything extravagant. He just worked his whole life and saved his whole life. So by the time he was old, he just had a lot of money. And he was still <laughs> cheap as hell. But that was just examples <laughs> like... <laughs> And those just examples for me to say, like, man, I can't do whatever. Seeing all these, I do got access to whatever. As long as you, I tell people this, as long as you got access to the information, you don't have any excuse. Yes. Because the, the information is what's going to change your life as long yeah. as you apply it. Whenever yeah. you don't have access to the information, that's when you can say, okay, shit mm -hmm. is really stopping me. But if right. you got access, it's, no, it's, it's, it's nothing stopping you but you. Yep. And especially now we're in the middle of the information age where it's like, bro, the information is out there. There's examples out there. People are showing you how to do it. All you got to do is go want to do it. And it's like, bro, I think about it, too, because I remember you or I heard that podcast you did with uh, Peebles with his son with, uh, you know, yeah. the what, is he the third? Don Peebles, the third, I think. Um, yeah, yeah. 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 And he was talking about, you know, how his family, they had a 300 year 300 plan. Year, 300 year plan. And not a 30 year plan. I was like, bro, that's just another level. Like, that's you talking 10 generations. And that's, yeah. like, that's, that's another level. <laughs> but, that, but then again, like I tell people all the time, that shows you why 
Don, Don Peebles has a net worth of damn near a billion dollars. That shows mm-hmm. you why. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You playing it for 300 years, like, that's you on a whole different level. With it's inevitable. Not only, yeah, it's, in, it's inevitable. You on a work ethic mindset, you on a whole different level than the average person. Mm-hmm. For sure, man. That's why everybody got to know that your kids and your grandkids are eating off of the decisions that you are going to make, that you're making right, right now. So, Facts. Facts. Hope you understand that. Um, Facts. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's as simple as that, bro. Would you, it, it's hard to make super decisions if you really think like that and you really believe that. It's yeah. going to be hard for you to make dumbass decisions because you know, like, this is going to affect my kids. Unless mm-hmm. you're just a selfish-ass person that don't care. Yeah. <laughs> Some of them out there for sure. 100%, yeah. man. Last thing I will just talk about, too, just right now because we're kind of on the subject. A long time ago, you had talked about, I don't even remember. It was just maybe a... I don't know why this thought just stuck in my head for a long time, but you had mentioned that uh, capitalism is kind of like the best thing for black people. And yep. um, I don't know if it was a tweet or a podcast. Some You said it somewhere, but I think... I think, think, it, was on, I think it was on a podcast. Oh, okay, yeah. On Tweet Talk, I think, with, with Todd. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. It, was, it was actually, yeah. And I think about that, too, because I every time I hear the word capitalism, I think, I don't know if you know Dr. Dennis Kimbrough. He's like that yep. dude. Yeah, he... So he talks about capitalism a lot. And the way he breaks it down is he says that, you know, capitalism, the Latin you know, derivative of the word capitalism is kaput. And he says that kaput, that Latin word just means head. Right. So in in what do you need to survive in a free and open society? It's your head. you got to be able to know how to use your head. That's what capitalism is. And, yep. you know, I think anybody has the capability to use their head. It's just a matter of they want to, right? Black a lot of black people think that the only way to kind of like become wealthy is using like talent, like you know, either rapping or like basketball skills or football or whatever. But it's like, bro, if you can use your mind, you'll make money forever. Yeah, that's that's what I, I sincerely believe that. Like, like granted, I'll say this: granted, cap is is capitalism. That system isn't perfect, but compared to the other systems, especially compared to the benefit it'll have for black people, it's yeah. the best system hands down. And I feel like the people that's against it, or I feel like they, I don't even really think they're against it. I feel like they just don't understand mm-hmm. the dynamic of it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They think, they think, because in a perfect world, right, socialism and all that stuff, it sounds like, man, in a perfect world, it would be good. But do you think, this This. This what really kills me, because you'll get these same people they talk about how fucked up the system is, how oppressed black people are, and then they'll be like with socialist ideas. Like, so you telling me the same system that you think oppressing you is gonna get go to a socialist system and break things down evenly for you? Do you really like either you lying about you saying that you really believe you're oppressed, or you just I don't know, you have some mentally deranged, I don't know what's wrong with you. There's no it doesn't make any that doesn't make any sense sense at all. Like capitalism gives everybody, uh, like I said, it's not perfect, but as, as long as, as the capitalism in place, you have a chance to level up. As long as you willing to work hard, put some effort into things, you could change your whole life. You know what I'm saying? Like who wants to be in a system where the everybody's getting paid the same amount? You sit on your ass and you get every month they're gonna send everybody two thousand dollars that you can't. That's the most money you probably gonna make. Like what? <laughs> How would that be beneficial to black people? You know what I'm saying? How would that be me personally? That wouldn't be beneficial to me at all. I don't want any handouts. Yeah. When you get handouts, it's easy for you to be controlled. Yeah. So I don't want anybody giving me handouts or my people handouts. You know what I'm saying? I want us to adopt a mentality, understanding this system, understand the benefits of it, how we could boss ourselves up and change the trajectory trajectory and do different things. So that's that's simply like that's simply put like how I look at it. Yeah. That's a really good point, too. And I, even to a le- lesser extent, too, that's kind of what happens when you get paid a paycheck, too, in terms of, like, you know, mm. that, that whole, that whole you know, mentality. I know uh, Jeremy Johnson, he talks about mm-hmm. domestic- domestication, where it's like once you get that paycheck, it, c- it conditions you to be comfortable and knowing that, it, you know, that paycheck's coming. But, you know, entrepreneurship, I agree, is, I think, yeah. is the best thing for It's the black. best. It's the <laughs> best, man. Because it, it teaches you so much, like, like, just prime example, bro, when you talked about the paycheck stuff, just look at what happened with these people getting a stimulus check and, un- and unemployment. How many people that's like, I'm not going back to work now? Yep. 
You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's programming them to be comfortable with sitting on your ass and just yeah. knowing, like, the government will take care of you. Mm-hmm. Thinking, like, but you thinking that's beneficial towards you, but it's not at all long term. Mm-hmm. That's, yeah. that's a terrible mentality to have. Yep. Matter of fact, no, I want to comment on that because this is why I truly believe reparations would literally do nothing but put you in a worse situation than what you already are. And the reason yeah. be, the reason for that is because if you are literally given something, you for one, you don't appreciate it as much. And yep. two, you're going to you, you're not being given the information of how to maintain it and build upon it as opposed to just being you're all you're doing is just being, being given a monetary uh, donation. And it's just like if you won a lottery or just like with uh, exactly. lots of pro- professional NBA, uh, NFL players, you get a lot lo- a large lump sum of money with no it, it, uh, information or education on how to build upon it. It's going to soon soon enough. It may take a year. It may take even a month some people would just get rid of it so quickly but at, at some point if you don't have the information or education on how to build upon it it's going to be gone and then it's and it gets, it's going to be back in the same hands of the people who gave it to you in the first place because you pay you pretty much uh paid them for everything that you tried that you wanted to buy that you really couldn't afford dog you preaching man like i tell people this all the time and when people when people hear me talk about it i think they get confused with me thinking like because just because I say this, that don't mean I don't think black people don't deserve reparations. But right. when I, when, how I look at it, reparations don't is not going to mean anything if we don't have financial literacy collected. Exactly. Like, it's going to be completely irrelevant. Like, prime example, and I just talked about this on Twitter. My uncle, I'm pretty sure y'all been hearing about the 10K, the 10K grants and loans yeah. the government's doing. Mm-hmm. So my uncle, got he got he got 10K, and he blew it in four days on strippers <laughs> and liquor. I saw this tweet, too. <laughs> And four in four days, bro, on strippers and liquor. Not, not, not I'm not saying that's what every person's going to do if they got a check course. like that. But I'm just saying that's a big example that a lot of people might they might not blow it on strippers and liquor, but it'll be they'll blow it on something that's not going to be beneficial for them at all long term. Yeah. And that's just if you don't have any financial literacy, getting a bunch of money don't mean shit. Like, so that's yeah. why me personally, I'm more we need to we need to gain financial literacy first. And we need to like uh, smarten up on things before we even get before we even get reparations because it's going to be more damage. It's going to yes. be more harm than anything long term if we get reparations and we mm-hmm. still got the same mentality collectively when it comes to money and shit like that. Yeah, man. And I, <laughs> I think too the the thing that wasn't passed down with the you know because the forty acres and a meal didn't happen right obviously that was like something it was gonna happen and the black people did, ended up not getting it but the thing that was missed out besides the obviously that was a you know billions of trillions of dollars of wealth that wasn't passed down but the biggest thing was like the financial literacy that would have came with the forty acres and the meal exactly. because all the white people that had land that passed it down you know amongst the generations they were also passing down hey this land appreciates in value hey this land you can <laughs> right. use to you can use to you know uh, start a business. Hey, this land right. you can sell for. That's what was getting passed down along the way as long. But I mean, when you don't have that to get passed down, then you're not gonna know that. So I think that's the biggest thing that was missed out on in the whole thing, which is it's unfortunate too, because black people, man. I mean, in an alternate universe, black people are. It's a completely different life. Um, it, you know, in the alternate universe where that did happen. That's real. That's real, man. <laughs> but yeah, um, we gonna kind of wrap up now with the uh. Fast five, just to kind of wrap okay. up the show. Um, this is just pretty much where we ask you five questions and you can uh, answer them in 60 seconds or less. Okay. <clears throat> so I'll take the first one and Marlon will take the next one and then we'll auction it. So first question, what does success mean to you? Success means, to me, it, look, it means options. Having the freedom to do what you want, when you want. Having the freedom to take care of your family. Spend as much time as your family whenever you want, as much as you want. So that's what success looks like to me time freedom having unlimited options to do as you please as long as it's it's, it's not it's not doing any harm to anyone and it's as simple as that for sure all right question number two what's your favorite money or business book uh man my favorite money or business book i would say uh principles by ray dalio and i like why should a white man have all the fun by reginald lewis Oh wow! I didn't even hear that one. Yeah, I'm about to peep that one. Cool. Yeah, yeah, it's a good book. Cool. Okay. Uh, would you rather have a thousand dollars a week for life or one million dollars today? A thousand a week for life, bro. No question. That's you know what I'm saying. That's and I ain't even did the math in my head, but I just know. I mean, like if you take a million today, 
I mean, you could do, you could, you could obviously, you could grow it too. But obviously, a thousand a week for life. That's, I mean, that's that's for life. Yeah. Like it's eventually oh, after I don't know how many years, it's eventually gonna be a million, right? <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, yep, for sure. All right. So, question number four: If you can go back and change anything about your journey, what would it be? Oh man. Uh. Oh man. To be honest, bro, probably nothing. <laughs> like, I, I, if it was one thing, it would probably be when I was in, when I was in school, growing up, like elementary, high school, and all that. Probably just taking education more serious. Cause I don't really, I, I didn't really care about it. I mean, you turned out good without it, right? <laughs> you definitely, you know, I think, I think you'd be straight. Um, cool. Last question. Then, where can people find out more about you? You can find me on uh, Instagram, all the social medias, Instagram, Twitter, primarily at uh, Xavier C. Miller. You can uh, listen to my podcast, Marrying Our Mindsets. It's available on all major streaming platforms. And if you're interested in real estate, you need help buying real estate, or you need help with mobile homes or anything like that, getting your finances together, you go to parkhillcapitalventures.com. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Y'all definitely got to listen to this one again <laughs> and, you know, Really, don't let this stuff go over your head. Because I know a lot of the stuff we talk about, a lot of people are going to be, you know, they're going to get in their feelings. Um, right. <laughs> which is which is fine. I I enjoy it. I, I, like, I like the criticism and all those kind of things. So it's cool. But this was a super dope episode, man. Your mindset was exactly, you know, the way I seen it on social media. So it was cool to kind of get to chop it up with you and talk about these things. Because these are definitely conversations that need to be had. So I, I, I applaud you, man, for, you know, starting a podcast, doing what you're doing, man, and just... You know, moving the culture forward because these are the, these are the, these like little things like this are, you know, no someone might listen to this and it's gonna change their entire family's trajectory. Um, mm-hmm. So that's 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 why we enjoy doing this. So you know, it was dope, man, and I appreciate you coming on here. Appreciate y'all, man. It was a, I, I had a ball. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That was one of my favorite episodes, actually. If you if you if you if you couldn't tell from my excitement during that, that conversation that we had was a conversation I have a lot very often, especially what we're talking about in the beginning with, you know, make selection and those kind of things, because that kind of stuff is very important and it's not talked about enough. That's why like, I go as far as like reading relationship books and those kind of things, because that's how important that kind of stuff is to me in terms of not messing that up. <laughs> I really, you know, liked his his perspective on, you know, the 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 not necessarily gender roles but how you know the how a man kind of should be carrying him. so that's why i said young men really need to tune into this episode and listen to this because you know i promise that mentality if you approach life like that it's going to change your life man it's going to change your life for the better so um i was definitely appreciative of him coming on here and getting kick game um you know what did you think of it First of all, I think we're going to change our names to the Mindset Monopolizers after a while because that's all we be preaching is mindset on each of um, pretty much all these episodes. But honestly, the mindset is what leads to the money. So this is kind of it, it goes hand in hand with each other. But I, this dude mindset was n- nevertheless like one of the best ones that I've heard, be, especially at, at the age that he's at. It's, and then that's in multiple regards. Like I love the way that he talked about how he was trying to choose, like find his wife, like w- what type of things he was looking for, what type of qualities. This dude uh, wasn't looking for 30, 36, 24, 36. He looking for uh, what, uh, what? how do you value your family? How do you value your dad? Uh, what type of um, values do you have with, with your finances? Stuff like that. The th- things that um, people just typically don't look for. And that's why I know you, earlier you said that a lot of uh, young men can get a lot of value out of this. And I think that's one big thing that they can take away from um, just from our guest today because... I don't know. He's just on, like I said earlier, he's on a whole different level than what most young men are at this age. So props to him for, for coming on today. We show appreciate him uh, just showing up in general. If you're interested in, you know, learning more about what they kind of got going on and, you know, they're they're offering pretty much like step by step hand holding in real estate investing. Um, and, you know, they're doing that through their company, Park Hill Venture or Park Hill Capital. And, um, you know, he, him and his girl, Deanna, they're doing that. And you know, I'm sure a lot of people can gain value of that. If you want to get into real estate investing, and that's definitely something you need to uh, look into. Um, we have a affiliate link for that. Um, definitely check it out. It should be in the bio. Um, but if not, then just hit us and we could try to get that to you ASAP. But um, yes, it should be there. But yeah, that was that's it for this episode of the Money Monopolizers podcast. New episodes will be released every thursday will be available on apple Podcasts, spotify and youtube just search money monopolizers wherever you listen to podcasts 
We hope you learned something of value today. And if you did, we'd appreciate it if you rated us five stars and left us a review on Apple Podcasts. You can find out more info about us on Twitter at The Monopolizers or on Instagram at Money Monopolizers. We post informative content on there that'll keep you engaged. So check that out and share those posts. But until then, we out of here. You've been listening to The Money Monopolizers podcast, helping you take control of your financial destiny. To learn more about how you can be in control of your money, visit MoneyMonopolizers.com. We'll catch you next time when Alex and Marlon share more personal finance and wealth creation tips with you. Now it's time to take action.